Hello everyone! Today we are going to start creating our first events and our basis for procedural animations. Even if you are not going to create the same project, you can learn a lot of tricks from this tutorial series. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. And if you have anything in mind, just comment down below. Let's start. So first, let's go into first person BP. Then create our first event. Right click and search for custom event. We will name it Dip. This is an event that will shake the body when the character jumps or lands. Let's add two float parameters to it and name them Speed and Strength. Then promote the strength to a variable and name it Dip Strength. From the output of the set node, create a timeline called tl underscore dip and open it up. Create a float track called dip alpha, set the length to 1 second and add 4 keys. Set their values as will be shown in the video. After that select all 4 keys and right click on one of them, then set interpolation mode to auto and adjust the line as shown in the video. Get the dip alpha float output and multiply it with the dip strength variable. Then promote the outcome to a variable called dip alpha. We are getting the value from the timeline and multiplying it with strength to get the value that will control the effects. Then we are getting dip alpha and lerping it between 0 and minus 10. This lerp works so simply, as the dip alpha increases to 1, output decreases to minus 10. We get our FP root's relative location, then split it into pins. After that, we add a make vector node and connect the floats as shown in the video. Then we are setting FP root's relative location to the output of the make vector node. We go back to the beginning of the event and setting the play rate of the timeline to the speed input of the event. We can select all the nodes and make a comment box called dip. And now it's time to use the dip event. First, we will create two events, jump dip and land dip. For the jump dip, we are just simply going to call the dip event and set the speed to 4 and the strength to 0.5. Then we will play sound at our actor's location, and for the sound, we will choose jump footstep underscore Q. For the land dip, get the last update velocity from character movement, then split it into pins. Get a vector length node and split it into pins, then connect Z to Z. Get jump Z velocity from character movement, create a normalized to range node, and connect the nodes as shown in the video. Then clamp the output between 0 and 2. After that, call the dip event and set the strength from output and speed to 5. Lastly, just copy and paste the play sound node and change the sound to land footstep underscore Q. You can select the nodes and add a comment box called jumping landing dip. And now it's time to run events. Just simply call the event on jumped and connect it to jump dip and call the event on landed and connect it to land dip. Then select all the nodes, right click and select collapse nodes, name it dip event. In this way, our event graph will look much more organized. To simply explain the dip event, we set the play rate of the timeline with the speed input. Then we multiply the output of the timeline with the variable dip strength that we've set from the input. So that way, if the strength is less than 1, the output of the lerp will be greater than minus 10. And lastly, we set the FPE roots relative Z to the output of lerp. 
And FP underscore root is basically our character's origin. Our character will move as the FP underscore root moves. So that's how we get the landing and jumping effect. Jumping is just simple, we call the dip and play sound at actor's location. But for landing, we first get our character's velocity one frame before landing. So if we land faster, the effect will be more. Then we get the vector length of it, cause we want a positive value. Then we normalize it to range by jump z velocity, to get the value divided by jump z velocity. For example, if the value equals to our jump z velocity, output will be 1, and if the value is bigger than jump z velocity, output will be greater. And lastly, if the character is falling down so fast, because we don't want to shake actor so much, we are clamping the result. The rest are same with the jumping, call the dip event, and play the sound. After we set up the animation BP in the next videos, our dip will look like this. Now we get IA underscore crouch to start building our crouch event. Before we start, change dip alphas and dip strengths categories to dip to keep BP organized. Then create a boolean called crouch toggle and set it to true for started and false for completed. And then we will get is falling from our character movement, then add a not boolean and connect it to the branch. From the true output, create a timeline called tl underscore crouch. Set the length to 0.2, then create a float track and add two keys. Set the keys as shown in the video, then select both keys, right click, and set the interpolation mode to auto. Name the track Crouch Alpha. Promote the output of the timeline to a variable, then create a new float variable called Base Walk Speed, and set its default value to 300. Get character movement and add the set max walk speed node. Then get the base walk speed variable and multiply it by 0.5. Get crouch alpha, then create a lerp and connect the pins as shown in the video. Now we are going to change our character's capsule half height to change the character's height when we crouched. We again get the character movement and add the set capsule half height node. Then create two float variables called stand height and crouch height and set the default values to 96 and 56. Then get the crouch alpha, create a lerp, get the new variables we've created and connect the pins as shown in the video. Now it's time to complete the uncrouch part. From the set node, add the set timer by function name node. Set the name to try to stand up. The time to 0.01 and looping to enabled and promote the timer to a variable called uncrouch timer. Get the timer and clear and invalidate it as shown in the video. Then create a custom event called stand up and connect it to reverse. Now we are going to create a function called try to stand up that will be fired by the timer we've just created. Get our actor's location and split it into pins. Then add a make vector node. Add the crouch height to our actor's location z value. Then connect the pins as shown in the video. Again, create the same nodes, but this time replace the crouch height with the stand height and multiply it by 1.1.
create a sphere trace by channel node, then connect the pins. For the ignored actors, make an array and add our character to the array. And for the radius, just get our capsule radius and plug it in. Then get a branch for the not bool of the return value of the sphere trace. From the true output, call the standup event. And lastly, clear and invalidate the uncrouch timer. In the crouch input event, if the character is not falling, we simply set our character's walk speed to half of the normal speed and capsule half height, the height of our character, to crouch height. And when we release the key, it will check if we have enough space to stand up. It will check the space until we have enough. And we use a timer for this logic. It fires the function until we clear and invalidate it. We start the timer when we release the key, and we just clear it when we hit the key, and if there is enough space to uncrouch. Lastly, when the standup event is called, it will reverse all of the changes that we've made to our actor. In the try to stand up event, we just create a sphere from the head of the crouching character to the head of the standing character. We set the radius to our actor's radius and ignored actors to ourselves. So if the sphere hits something, it means there is not enough space to stand up. And if it doesn't hit, we can stand up. And if we stand up, we stop the timer from working, so we are not checking for space anymore. After we set up the animation BP in the next videos, our crouch will look like this. Select all the nodes, right click, then click collapse nodes and name it crouch event. Select the crouch variables and change the category to crouch. And for the base walk speed, stand height and crouch height, set the category to charvars. Get IA underscore sprint and create a variable called sprint toggle. Set it to true when IA underscore sprint is started and set it to false when it is completed. Then set our max walk speed to 1.5 times our base walk speed. Create a new custom event called should stop sprint copy and paste the set nodes and remove the multiply node and connect the execute pins as connected then create a float input for a custom event called velocity axis create a branch and if the input is less than 0.5 set the max walk speed Go to the base movement input and add should stop sprint at the end of nodes and connect the action value Y to should stop sprint. The should stop sprint event is basically checking if the character is moving forward or not. When we press W, it's one, and when we press S, it's minus one. A and D don't affect. Then we create a custom event called stop sprint and connect it to the set node. In the sprint event, we just increase the character's max walk speed and decrease it when we release the key. And if the should stop sprint events input is less than 0.5, we also stop the sprint. And the stop sprint event stops the sprint too. We will use the stop sprint event in the next episodes. Select all the nodes, right click, and select collapse nodes. Name it sprint event. After we set up the animation BP in the next videos, our sprint will look like this. 
And this is it for today's episode. In this video, we've almost finished our movement events. In the next video, we will create walking event and create the animation BP. If you have anything in mind, just comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. So goodbye for now.